Hello, friends. Last night, I said to my family, I'm get of, getting kind of tired of having those days where you always remember where you were when you heard the news. Now, I'm a pastor, and I don't often comment directly on politics. Most often, I would rather hold my tongue when it comes to politics so that people of every political persuasion might listen better when I speak about Jesus. But I also believe that there are times when pastors need to speak clearly on political matters. There are times when pastors need to offer Christians and all people a clear vision of the humanity which all people hold in common. We need to offer a clear vision of how we can best relate to our neighbors, especially our neighbors with whom we disagree. And we need to offer a clear vision of how to live out our God-given roles as both disciples of Jesus Christ and as citizens of the United States of America. Today, I hope to offer a way for us to move forward through yesterday's events when a mob broke into the U.S. Capitol building. Yesterday evening, I was gladdened to hear our congressional leaders uniformly denounce this assault on our democratic processes. But we cannot simply move past that event. We cannot minimize it. We cannot explain it away as simply the momentary fever of a crowd which was incited by an irresponsible president. Yesterday evening, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said rightly that January 6th will go down as one of the darkest days of recent American history. If Americans do not stop and earnestly examine themselves, then I believe that we will see yet even darker days. And I don't want that. I'm kind of tired of having those days where you always remember where you were when you heard the news. But Lord willing, January 6th, 6th, 2021 will be the darkest day for American democracy in recent history, and there will be brighter days ahead. How do we move forward? How do we move forward as people who are willingly subject to the governing authorities? that we have placed over ourselves and we believe God has placed over us? How do we move forward as people who live at peace with everyone around us? It starts with examining ourselves and recognizing our own faults and resolving to do better. In 2020, we heard much about the political polarization of America. We recognize that Americans disagree with one another strongly, perhaps as strongly as we ever have, but yesterday's events were not the result of disagreement or polarization. Yesterday's events show us that something really dangerous has taken root in America. We have become alienated from one another. Alienation is something wholly different from disagreement. We can have a polarized people who disagree deeply and yet still recognize that we are all Americans who are striving to guide our nation in the way that we believe it should go. But alienation happens when we look around us and we begin to divide people into friends and enemies, into real Americans and imposters, into the right kind of people and the wrong kind of people. When we allow ourselves to become alienated from one another, then we begin to think of our neighbors not as people, but as an unthinkable other. Something that is so far removed from goodness and truth that it is not worth debating, it is not worth arguing with, it is not worth respecting, it must only be dominated and put in its place. Alienation lurks within every moment where our society is truly divided. And indeed, whenever we see atrocities committed around the world, it seems that the necessary prerequisite for destroying our fellow humans, people who are made in the very image of God, is to dehumanize them and to allow ourselves to be alienated from them. This, I believe, is why Jesus gives us the radical command to love our neighbors as ourselves. Uh, not just to love our neighbor a whole lot, not simply to give our neighbor what we believe that he or she deserves, Jesus commands me to value my neighbor just as much as I value myself. I believe that Jesus takes aim squarely at the forces of alienation when he commands me to love my enemies and to even pray for those who persecute me. Now our first president, President George Washington, 
gave an incredible farewell address after he chose not to seek a third term in office. And there, President Washington reminds us that the most important thing that we have as Americans is our national unity as Americans. He says that we should see our unity as Americans as the main thing which secures our nation's independence and peace. Washington is speaking of our unity as Americans when he says, and quote, as this is the point in your political fortress against which the batteries of internal and external enemies will be most constantly and actively, though often covertly and insidiously directed, it is of infinite moment or importance, he's saying, that you should properly estimate the immense value of your national union. Washington goes on to say that we should be people who find ourselves, again quote, indignantly frowning upon the first dawning of every attempt to alienate any portion of our country from the rest or to enfeeble the sacred ties which now link together the various parts. What has been happening recently in America is that people at both extremes of our political spectrum have attempted to weaponize alienation as a way to achieve policy victory. Our left wing does not call conservatives Americans, but bigots, racists, and homophobes. Our right wing does not call progressives Americans, but communists, socialists, and enemies of the state. Conspiracy theorists push this kind of rhetoric beyond the extreme. And foreign adversaries of America do their best to stoke the flames by feeding propaganda into our social media feeds. Yesterday's riot was a victory for the forces of alienation in America. We must examine ourselves and ask, Have we allowed ourselves to see our political opponents as an unthinkable other? Have we mentally divided our countrymen and women into real Americans versus opponents of democracy and justice? Have we assented to rhetoric and speakers who frame our democratic process in these terms? Have we stood by while political leaders have attacked the fabric of America itself as a way to achieve short-sighted policy and electoral goals. If you have, here's some good news. The damage done to our country is not yet fatal. We can still preserve this nation which has so long led the world in democracy. To my friends who are Christian, we can still be a voice within our society which preaches the humanity and value inherent in all people. We can choose to see even our most extreme political opponents not as caricatures or an unthinkable other, but as people, as Americans who live and breathe, who love and hope and dream along with the rest of us. And their hopes and dreams might be different from ours, but they are still American hopes and dreams. Now this is going to be the most difficult portion of this message to say. We need to be serious about calling every American an American. And we need to start now. Last evening into today, we have heard quite a bit about those people at the Capitol building. Those rioters, that mob, those insurrectionists and terrorists. This past summer, we heard quite a bit about those people in, for example, the Black Lives Matter movement. Those rioters, that mob, those Marxists and terrorists. These are Americans. Yesterday's Yesterday's real tragedy was not that the Capitol building was attacked. It's been attacked before. <sighs> Yesterday's real tragedy was that the Capitol building was attacked by Americans.
yesterday the Capitol was attacked by us. This is hard to say. But if we cannot say it, and if we cannot believe it, then we cannot begin to reverse the alienation which has turned us from neighbors into strangers and which has turned us from citizens into adversaries. We must also acknowledge the same thing about others, about Black Lives Matter supporters and about progressives and conservatives alike. We are all true Americans. Let us examine ourselves. Let us hold ourselves to a higher standard so that we can hold our elected leaders to a higher standard. Let us seek the forgiveness of our friends, our neighbors, and our family members. Let us never label our fellow Americans as the unthinkable other. But let us grapple honestly and fairly and peacefully with the differences which divide us. And our nation will heal. Thank you.